You're so into, deep into your conversation. It's, uh, it's so long since last Sunday, isn't it, wasn't it? So much happening since last Sunday. So, uh, so good to see you this morning. And uh, we, we just want to welcome you today, this morning. And also we welcome our um, live stream audience this morning as well. Um, last Sunday, every Sunday that we're away, we always watch the first service because the services they start at other places that we go preach at, it's 10 o'clock. And I thought, oh, what a waste of a morning. But anyway, so we usually watch, um, I personally watch the, uh, the 8.30 service, so I don't miss out. Okay, let's stand. Hallelujah. No, he's here. God is here. Before you came, before you entered this place, he was already here. Holy Spirit, He's been waiting for us. Hallelujah. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be filled and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and lift up them up, O ancient doors. The King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. We've been listening to uh, Pastor Ellie talking about a, a, um, encountering God. Not only that, God wants to encounter us in His own uh, sovereign way, but it is us, us individually and us cooperatively that we, we, we can encounter God together. And, uh, and this scripture, and I know that um, David is talking um, to, to, to the gates of Jerusalem and talking about the nation. But this morning I felt God, I, um, you know, it's talking about us individually and us collectively. As we encounter, if we want to encounter God, there are gates that we need to open. We need to speak to our gates, the gates of our hearts, the ancient doors of our lives and things, the ancient doors that nobody knows, only you and God. And I believe that Holy Spirit wants to open those ancient doors that the Holy Spirit can encounter you and give you life and give you the, His light and shine His light into it. And let the King of glory, who is this King of glory? David said, would you like to welcome that King of glory into your life? Would you like to encounter that King of glory this morning? We've been talking about encounter, encountering. It is an attitude. It is an uh, expectation. How can you encounter God? It's by opening the gates of our hearts. Opening the gates of our minds. Opening the gates that has been shut for a long time. And God wants us to get, well, if you're not going to open, I'm not going to come in. If you want to encounter me, open those doors. Open those gates. Faith City Church, there are gates that we hasn't been opened for a long time. Maybe because we don't see it. Maybe because we are lazy. Maybe because we are, you know, are irresponsible about those gates. But you have a responsibility to encounter God. I have a responsibility to encounter God. And then the, that's, uh, the verse before that uh, says, For such a generation of those who seek Him, who seek the face of the Lord, the God of, of Jacob, you and I can seek Him. You and I can encounter this almighty God. The God of uh, the Lord, the King, uh, the, 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 the Lord of hosts, He is the King of glory. Amen, Faith City Church. Amen, live stream audience. Encounter God wherever you are. Open the gates of your heart. Open the gates, the, the, the ancient doors that only you it hasn't been opened to God for a long time. But God wants to come. But it is you, it is our attitude to encounter him this morning heavenly father we thank you we thank you this is a new day 
all that your, your mercies are new every morning, Lord God. And Lord, in every day, Lord God, it's a new beginnings. And this, this your mercy, Lord God, bring new beginnings, Lord God. And Lord, that we can start again afresh in you, Lord God. For your mercies are new every morning and there are new beginnings in you, Lord God. To yesterday is gone, Lord God. Lord, we forget yesterday by your mercy and by your grace. But Lord, we come, Lord God, with an open heart to you to encounter you, the King of glory, that you will come in and touch our lives, Lord God. Change us, Lord God, that we will, Lord God, reflect your glory. Bless your people that we will come, Lord God, to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord God. Father, you seek those who are worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Bless your people this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's sing, found in your name. Found in your name, the power to save with only a whisper of mountain shake. Jesus, our hope.
in me 
have those ministering the emblems come. Take your seats. communion with you for a long time. Had it at other churches when we go, but uh, I think Ben took communion last time, but we were away. It's lovely to uh, participate once again in what the Bible tells us to do. Every time we come together and eat, uh, we remember what he's done for us. I heard a great minister of the gospel. If I mention his name, everybody, uh, probably 99% of those that are here will know his name. He was a great miracle worker. And he said, uh, it's not inconceivable that Jesus would have had the flu, the sniffles. And I thought, that can't be right. Because the life of the flesh is in the, the blood. If your blood is 100% okay, you don't get sick. But our blood is not 100% okay, but we still, most of us are not sick. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, not, that's not just any blood. Not your blood, not mine, not all of us, but the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of that blood, there'll be no forgiveness of sin. That his blood is not able, is not only able to cleanse us, but forgives the sin of every human being that avail themselves to that blood. That's powerful. So to say that... Uh, Maybe Jesus had the flu or need to take a tablet every now and again. Means the blood that was shed on the cross is not enough for all eternity to take away the sin of humanity. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Yours is not whole, mine is not whole. But when we participate by faith, these emblems that represent his blood, his body, and what he's done for us. We can walk in fullness of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And we are grateful to God for that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you today. Thank you that once and for all, in all eternity, you took the sin of humanity on your body on the cross, and we being dead to sin might live unto righteousness, and by your stripes we are healed. And this morning again, Lord, we come to participate of this feast of salvation and appropriate by faith what you have done for us and say thank you thank you again for the cross thank you for your blood thank you Lord God that you gave your life for us your body was broken that ours might be whole your blood was shed that our sins might be forgiven and we bless you and honor you today we eat with gratitude of heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's eat and drink together.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you today. We embrace in our hearts those that we know that are not saved. That, Lord, that we can partake, participate by faith on their behalf. That they too will come to know you, Lord. We honor you this morning. You're a great God. In Jesus' name. And everyone say Amen. You can, uh, if you pass your class to the aisle, somebody will collect it. And, but you can say hello to somebody. And... Thank you, guys. Hello. Are you behaving yourself? Good to see you. Good morning again, Morena. There will be a morning tea after our service this morning. So maybe we can put a, to be continued to the, your conversation this morning. But we can still have the attitude of worship that we will give our tithes and, tithes and offering to worship God, our Savior who gave to us all. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just want to honor you this morning with our fruit of our labors, Lord God, and fruit of your generosity, Lord God, to us, Lord God. And Father, we pray that you will bless, Lord God, those, Lord God, will give and honor you, Lord God, through tithing and, and uh, offering, Lord God, that you will multiply and bless them abundantly. And uh, we designated, Lord God, this finance to your purpose, the purpose of your kingdom, your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, while we're taking our offering, and um, tithes and offering, I think I only got one um, announcement, which is something that we've been talking about it. Um, our Empowering Far Now conference, that is going to be this Friday and this Saturday. Wow. It's coming around so fast. <laughs> and it's going to happen. And it's going to be awesome. So just want to remind you, um, if you are, I don't know, um, Pastor Karina. Pastor Karina, I just want to let you know that we have, those who don't know, um, they, they don't attend uh, a home group. We have uh, facilitated a group or a a, a location for, for someone that uh, doesn't um, belong to a home group yet. And Pastor Karina, can you stand please? I know everybody know Pastor Karina. Pastor Karina is going to host um, her group here in the um, uh, staff room, prayer room. Uh, and and uh, that will be, you're going to meet at what time? Earlier, Earlier quarter to seven? Quarter to seven, if you want to attend her group, let her know, and, um, and, and uh, she's going to host, and uh, you're going to have some uh, yummy stuff and drink, um, you know, like drink, a nice drink, eh? Okay, so that you will be sober for, uh, to watch the, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, to watch our conference, amen? So it's, that's going to be in here. Um, on the, and, and the other one, uh, Beata will host a youth, only girls, uh, in, the, in the lounge there. 
And then the uh, boys will be in the youth um, lounge upstairs in the gym. I don't know who's going to host the, 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 the gym, ho gym lounge. All right. They'll so those, those are the, um, the locations that if you're not belonging, if you don't belong to a home group, or if your home group leader is not hosting a, um, a, 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 a home group um, gather, uh, these are the um, other locations that you can join, okay? And make sure you let those leaders to, uh, and, and um, uh, Pastor Christine will, uh, I think Pastor Christine will be in the other lounge uh, as well. Anyway, it's going to be great. And uh, I hope all the home groups, um, most of the home group leaders are hosting um, this conference at your house or wherever, or at a marae, I would love to go. Um, you know, it's going to be absolutely powerful. Um, this is talking about who we are. God wants to restore who we are uh, because without God in a family, it's not going to work. Amen. So it's, we have a powerful uh, speakers. That is Pastor Eliafi, um, Nick Tutasi, um, Hannah Famuina, as, and also um, Sean Tutoy. And, and every other exciting things, and it's a surprise. Okay? I'm not going to tell you, but it's going to be a lot of surprise that it is going to bless you out of your socks, whatever that is. <laughs> And, um, and, and church, you know, there are other churches that are coming in. Um, well, they are tuning in and they are registered to, um, to host the conference as well. So Faith City Church, it is your conference and we need to support it and need to be encouraged so that we will be in the same line, same page uh, in our families and also um, when we know who we are. Okay, I think that's about it for me. And if there's nothing else, it's on, um, on our newsletter. Thank you. Let's all clap for my husband. <laughs> he got resurrected this morning. <laughs> got resurrected this morning, she said. I'd like to uh, extend uh, condolences to the church. Those of you, some, many of you were very, very close to Elaine. and Elaine's gone home to be with Helen and Jesus. And uh, I think sometimes we need to think beyond the veneer of where we are. Otherwise, our sorrow will be prolonged. I just wish I wore this suit when I was doing the, the funeral. Because it was this suit that, he's, that her grandson said to her, uh, Nana, how come God always wears green? Because when we arrived in 1992... I, I wore this suit quite, quite, quite a lot. I don't wear it, but I think I'm getting two European eyes. <laughs> Only Samoans wear these kind of stuff. <laughs> but uh, she used to do the taping of the messages, and she put the, the, the little grandson on the, on the, the counter, and, and, uh, and she's doing the, the, the taping, and, and uh, the grandson turned around, and I will pass, and the grandson said, Nana, why does God always wear green? The perspective of a child. She thought I was God, and now you realize that God is Samoan. <laughs> and he's, 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 he's colored. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God's a good God. And uh, I think the conference is going to be a great conference. I've spoken at a number of uh, conferences like that online. And uh, amazing what happens and where people tune in from. There are churches outside of uh, our city that are tuning in to our conference, and it'll be sad when they tune in and you don't tune in. And Ben announced that it was $30, only $20 to re register, all right? Um, praise God. So God wears green, and thank you to uh, the church. <laughs> And to the staff for organizing things for uh, Elaine's home going. Uh, it was uh, well done and blessed and uh, to God be the glory. Hallelujah. 
Uh, sorry we were not here last week, but uh, we had to do something in Auckland, and then we had a meeting on a Tuesday that was going to last till Thursday, but we had to come home to do Elaine's funeral, and then uh, we flew back to Auckland on Wednesday because we had meetings on Thursday, and then we had uh, the chaplaincy conference on Friday and Saturday. So we got home last night at about, what time did we get home? About six or somewhere around there. And uh, tomorrow I'm going to Auckland to do a funeral for one of the leaders of our Tongan churches. So please pray for, pray for us. And this coming, uh, coming uh, weekend, we are going to be in Dunedin because we have to induct a pastor of a church there. They've been without uh, a pastor for some time. They finally found one, and we're going to induct him. It's our key church in Dunedin, so we'll be there on uh, this coming weekend. Are you okay? In the second service, I'm going to explain something, so you can stay for the second service, or you can, you can go home. And uh, when we did the last service we did, we anointed some people and, uh, you know, the power of God just flowed uh, beautifully. But there's a lot of people in our church, because they knew, had no idea what happened. <laughs> and I did not know, I, I, I'm, I mean, this is a Pentecostal church. But we haven't done altar calls for quite some time. So people have been asking, what on earth is that? So I'm going to answer some of those questions in the second service. But for most of us, it's just a normal part of belonging to church and knowing the, the power of God. And uh, we'll explain that to some of the people. I, I noticed that. Some years ago, probably six years ago, there was a couple that uh, came to our church, and uh, they were in the music team. And God began to move in the service, and they left. They never came back. Is it their fault? No. It's just that they did not understand what was going on. And uh, part of the small groups, it's one of the benefits of the small groups that you can ask those questions that are curly and you are able to not only explain but demonstrate what God is doing. The best place to make disciples and mature believers is in a small group. You can't mature a believer just coming to the services. We have to have that. We have to have the small groups to see that people are matured. Best place to train people for ministry. I, I remember in a particular church we were very familiar with, and uh, the leading elder came to the front, and he prayed for somebody, and uh, the person fell down under the power of God, and that was the leading elder in a Pentecostal church. It took him about two weeks to get over the fact that, that God used him to pray for somebody, and they fell over. The best place to train people for ministry is in small groups. The best place to uh, ground people in their faith is in small groups. The best place to activate the gifts of the Holy Spirit is in the small groups. Many times in our Pentecostal tradition, we leave it to the minister to do everything. But the Bible says uh, God has given the church apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints so the saints can actually do the ministry. 
so that all of us, there may be uh, the five-fold ministry, but the ministry of the body is done by everybody. Are you okay? The best place to practice body ministry, provoking one another to, to love and good works. I can't provoke everybody all the time because otherwise you'll leave the church and go to another church and say, that pastor really does not love people. You have to provoke people in small groups so that people can learn to minister and learn to serve and learn to love. Caring for one another, hospitality and community. And the best place to find that people have needs <laughs> are in small groups. Somebody uh, was annoyed that they did not know that Elaine was in the hospital. And they, they were annoyed at the staff. They, they can ring up, but the staff is not going to ring everybody up to tell them that so-and-so is in the hospital. It'll be folly to expect that to happen. But when we gather together in small groups, things can be known, people's needs are known, and we can minister to them. Hallelujah. So if you ever look at uh, Psalm 110, we were talking from that last time. If you have a look at Psalm 110. Are you all right? Yeah. Sorry, my, my, uh, my voice is a bit croaky. My wife said I got resurrected this morning. <laughs> Praise God. Literally, it was good. God is good. And verse 3. No, let's read, let's read from verse 1. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of your strength out of uh, Faith City Church. Well, it's just context. The rod of his strength is not sent out of a uh, collegiate. It's sent out of Zion. It's sent out of his church. Rule in the midst of your enemies. You rule. Many times we are ruled over. We are <laughs> you rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power, in the beauty of holiness, from the womb of the morning. You have the dew of your youth. <clears throat> your people shall be volunteers. Another translation said, your people shall be willing in the day of your power. And willingness, and we said uh, a while back, many times when we tell you to do this, this, and that, it's like we are suggesting, and in a sense we are. Because until your will is engaged, in what we're doing, it will never happen. That's why when we pray, Jesus said, pray that his will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Because even though his will is great, it will not be done on earth unless we allow it to happen. Are you all right? Now, I'm preaching to the converted, and I'm sharing things that you already know. The difficulty is, when you know something, you often think you're doing it. I know that. Well, I know that. And we often think we are doing it just because we know it. So, the Bible tells us to be willing in the day of his power. When is the day of his power? The last 2,000 years. 
when he came on the day of Pentecost. It's the beginning of the day of his power. And in the last two days, last 2,000 years, it's the day of his power. And the people of God must be willing because he's here. Now, I was going to speak on something else, but I, I, I got resurrected this morning, so <laughs> I didn't have time to meditate on what else I, I, I needed to speak on. The Lord dropped this on me yesterday and willing to be willing to do something. The difficulty sometimes with us, we are willing when we think we are now equipped. Then we say, now I can do it because now I'm qualified. If that's the way you think, that's not even biblical. So a lot of people say, but I don't get the revelation you get. You should not get the revelation I get. Because you're not the pastor of the church. I am the pastor of the church. And the reason God gives me things that maybe you can study not, is because God has given me responsibility to feed you. But God is willing to give you what you can do around your circle of influence. And you don't have to qualify to do anything but the fact that you have something such as I have. Give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Now, <clears throat> the Bible says of Jesus that he went around doing good. That's all he was doing. And in the doing good, he healed everyone that was oppressed of the devil. But most of us are waiting to be qualified. That's a, that's a humanistic perspective that you can only do something when you've got a PhD. But in the economy of God, are you okay? Um, the Greek look for wisdom. The Jews looked for a sign, but the answer to both is the cross. Yeah. Foolishness to those that are wise, <laughs> and it seems to be powerless to those that are looking for power, but the power is in what Christ has done. And the wisdom is in what Christ has done. So the Greek concept where all our children are schooled under says that you have to qualify to do something. You don't have to qualify to belong to a small group. And you don't have to qualify to do a small group. You just need to be saved. And in the doing of that, in the willingness to give out the little bit that you have. Because God stores his word in our hearts every Sunday we come. Now it would be terrible if you know everything we preach in the last 30 years and go to Adam Hall and never give that to somebody else. Don't enrich Adam Hall with the treasures of your heart. When Joseph said, put all the grain into the grain of storehouses, where is the storehouse? You have a storehouse full of the glory of God and the goodness of God, and you will take it to Adam without sharing it with somebody. Are you all right? Because you have a lot of stuff. You don't know. Have you ever talked to somebody and you thought, did I say the right thing? And they cry. <laughs> you think you didn't say the right thing. But between you issuing out water, God turned it into wine in their ears. But somebody has to give out water. You need to find those little areas and you can be 
such a blessing. Hallelujah. But willingness always has to do with service. Now, our difficulty in the church is that, you know, uh, the church is always and will always be willing, volunteers. If I was in a bank, I can tell the bank, I can run a bank very smoothly, because I hold a purse string. In a church, nobody holds a purse string. Everyone has to volunteer in the day of his grace. So we all volunteer. Now the first time volunteer is, uh, I mean willing, is used in the Bible, has to do with service. When, when Abraham said to his servant, go find a wife for my son, uh, but don't take my son over there. Go and get a wife for her. And the servant said, if I find a wife and she is not willing to come, what do I do? And then he said, if she is not willing, then you are, is abscon the right word? Somebody help me. You are relieved or you are? What is Epsilon? Epsilon. So if she is not willing, then you are free from the responsibility of trying to bring her. And if you're not willing, if we are not willing, then God will go somewhere else to find people that are willing in the day of his grace. Hallelujah. So if I have a look at uh, Genesis 24, And verse 5, and the servant said to him, perhaps the woman will not be willing to follow me to this land. Must I take your son back to the land from which you came? But Abraham said, beware that you do not take my son back there. Verse 8 says, and if the woman is not willing to follow you, then you will be released from this oath. So everything we do in the church is volunteer. And like one of the great leadership gurus said, it's easier to lead a bank and a corporation than to lead the church. Because in the church, you tell people they are sinners. Then you tell them to give. So you, you virtually insult people from that perspective, and then you tell them to give. And everything is volunteer. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And sometimes we get offended at that. We may get annoyed at that. But when it comes to willingness, it always has to do with serving others. Are you willing? Let's have a look at uh, Exodus 35. I don't know if you're, are you, are you okay? Is this good? Yes. Uh, I don't know if I'm blessing you, but I'm blessing me. <laughs> Hallelujah. God told Moses in uh, Exodus 25 to take an offering. And the offering that they gave, they can only give what they could. Some women, the only thing they could give was an earring. So they gave that earring. Some gave a nose ring. 
in the start of uh, the church that became the largest congregation that we know of in the planet, there was a woman that gave, and she gave her hair. Just a willingness, just something small. I'm just trying to tell you that the very little things that we have, Can I have a drink? Can I have a cake? And then she cried. Got very little oil, very little flour. Got one more meal left and we die. Feed me first before you die. Just the little things that we do, the menial things that we can do to serve others. So God told Moses to take up an offering, and the whole uh, from there until chapter 36 talks about this particular offering. But in verse uh, 5, chapter 35, it says this Take from among you an offering to the Lord, whoever is of a willing heart. Let him bring it as an offering to the Lord, gold, silver, and bronze. And you will look at that, it's just not just gold, silver, and bronze. They were earrings and garments and stuff. Whatever they could have. Hallelujah. Verse 21. Then everyone came whose heart was stirred and everyone whose spirit was willing. And they brought the Lord's offering for the work of the tabernacle of meeting for all his service and for the holy garments, they came, both men and women, as many as had a willing heart. It's willing. Let's be willing in the day of his grace. But it has to do with serving one another. Are you okay? Verse 29. The children of Israel brought a free will offering to the Lord. A free will offering to the Lord. All the men and women whose hearts were willing to bring material for all kinds of work, which the Lord by the hand of Moses had commanded. Now when they did that, you come to Chapter 36, and they had a a protest. The protest was the offering was too much. They were so willing to give that the carpenters and the architects of the tabernacle said to Moses, tell the people to stop giving. Why? Because there was a willingness to give. Have you ever found in a church where the pastor stops the church from giving or from serving one another because they were... When we are willing, and it's a change that only you and only I can make in our own lives. And it's amazing how much strength you get when you're willing. I've got a friend in Brisbane. Pastors a big, big church. And he loves golf. He said, with the size of church I've got, I've got no time for anything else but the church. But when a friend rings me about golf, it is amazing how much I can move stuff around because he wants to play golf. It's amazing how much strength you have to do what God has called us as a church to do if there was a willing heart. Are you all right? When David 
was going to build a tabernacle. And God said to him, you're not going to build a tabernacle. You're going, your son is going to build a tabernacle. You, you're going to just get things prepared for the tabernacle, but uh, the temple. But your, your son's going to build a temple. So David going to the people of God and asking them to give. And uh, I'll close with that. First Chronicles 28. Give me five minutes, then you can have a cup of tea. David talking to Solomon, verse 9. As for you, my son Solomon, know the God of your father and serve him with a loyal heart and a willing mind. Willingness always seemed to go with this service, serving others, serving God. Verse 21, it says this. Here are the divisions of the priests and the Levites for all the service of the house of God and every willing craftsman will be with you. Talking to his son. His son is now going to build a tabernacle and encouraging him about what God is doing and to be faithful and be willing to do what God has uh, given him to do. And in chapter 29, they gave the offering and verse 5, the gold of things of gold for the things of gold, the silver for things of silver, for all kinds of work to be done by the hands of the craftsman who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord. That was the question. Who is willing? We have enough. We have enough resources <laughs> if we are willing. And we will have enough people if we are willing. And then he said, And the leaders of the fathers of the houses, leaders of tribes of Israel, and captains of thousands, and of hundreds with officers over the king's work, offered willingly. Verse 9. Then the people rejoice, for they had offered willingly, because with a loyal heart they had offered willingly to the Lord, and King David also greatly rejoiced. It's a willing heart. If you're willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So in his prayer, when the, he prayed, David thanking God, First Chronicles 29, 14. This is part of the prayer. And in his humility, he says, but who am I? And who are Faith City Church people? that we should be able to offer so willingly as this. For all things come from you, and of your own we have given to you. Everything, the strength to serve, the substance we can give, all things are from him, through him, and to him. The strength to serve, the willingness is ours, but the strength to do what God is, is from him, the stuff we have in our homes is from him. The thought patterns that you have, if you will allow him to renew your mind, is from him. All he's asking, is there a willingness to do it? Because when there's a willingness, we will be able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think because we are willing volunteers in the day of his grace. Go and have a cup of tea. <laughs>